Hey everybody, I'm back with the CZ457 and some exciting news to share with anyone who's been following this little project of mine. Uh, as you can tell from the title, I have registered for my first uh, 22 match this upcoming Sunday, so I'm pretty excited to try that out. Uh, I'm going to just call it NRL 22, even though I don't believe the organization that's hosting it is technically part of the NRL, but it's a very similar style match. And um, I mentioned before in a video that I built this CZ457 specifically to shoot these types of competitions with, so I'm kind of happy that it's kind of fulfilling that role. I'm a little bit nervous because it's not only my first uh, 22 match, it's also my first uh, match in any shooting discipline. So a little bit anxious, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Originally, I wanted to get a lot more trigger time behind the rifle before entering into any sort of match. But um, I figure the best way to get experience is just to kind of step out my comfort zone a little bit and just go for it. So I was uh, put into contact with the match director in my area and I just reached out. When I reached out to him, it was about a week and a half out from the first match of the year in, here in January. So he said, just come out to it, you know, bring your rifle and just have, um, have, a, have a go at it. So that's exactly what I did. I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see what works and what doesn't because I'm going in, obviously, the open class. There's a production class to these NRL 22 uh, matches and an open class if your gun and scope combo is above $1,000, which obviously uh, this build, build puts it way above that threshold. So I'm going to be shooting with some of the more experienced uh, shooters in the open class. And not to say that there's not experienced shooters in the production class, but uh, generally guys that take it really seriously, of course, will upgrade their rifles and eventually shoot in the open class. So I'm going straight into that with the CZ457 MTR. And I thought I'd kind of document the process of preparing for my first NRL 22 match. For those who were following my, my series of videos on the gun might be interested, as well as just for my own documentation in the future. Uh, I think I'll split this up into uh, four or five different parts. So as you're watching the video now, it'll say part one of whatever, and just show my preparation. And, the, and then the last video in the series will be the match itself. Um, I don't know how much I can actually film the day of the match but i'll if anything i'll just do kind of a recap after the fact and um, by the time you're watching this now i would have already shot the match because leading up to the match uh, in four days now i don't have any time to do any video editing so this will all come out after i've actually shot it but filming it right now i have not shot the match yet and i thought i'd just start part one here today talking about the rifle setup that i'll be using for sunday's um sunday's uh 22 match and not specifically on the build itself because I already have an overview of the CZ457 but more so of the aspects of how, um, why I have it set up the way it is for the NRL 22 match coming up. So let's take a closer look at the rifle for this part one video series of preparing for my first um, NRL 22 match. So looking at the rifle, of course, I put the CZ457 MTR into this MDT ACC chassis. ACC stands for Adjustable Core Competition, so it was built from the ground up to be a competition chassis. So of course, it's going to be a very, very good candidate to shoot uh, NRL 22 matches with. And the biggest thing besides the super adjustable buttstock, I would say that um, really drew me towards the ACC was the full length ARCA rail you get underneath the forend of the chassis. So it's about 17 inches of arca rail space that you have and of course that gives you a very rapid adjustment for where you can put your uh, front support on the rifle and then lock it down so that's something i really want to utilize you can see here i am using the atlas bt65 cal bipod on an area 419 arca lock mount and that gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of my front support and where i want it on the chassis Generally speaking, if I'm bench shooting or prone shooting, not doing too much dynamic stuff, I'll put my bipod kind of further out. Um, puts the, the uh, pivoting center of the rifle pretty far away from my body, so any movements in my body or shoulder it has a pretty minimal effect on the muzzle direction. If I were to bring it in a lot closer here towards the chassis, um, any movement back here on, on my body gives much more uh, of a sweep to the muzzle. So that's an aspect you can take into consideration if you're shooting multiple targets. But the other thing that's pretty cool about the adjustment properties of this um, Arca rail is the fact that if you're shooting on narrow, narrow barriers and you want to both have a front support and a rear bag at your grip or at your shoulder, you can hopefully bring this bipod in close enough where you can fit the entire footprint 
of your support system onto that barricade. So I think that's really cool. I'm going to try and utilize that because looking at the course of fire that was released for this month's um, match, we will be shooting off a big barrel essentially on the side of it. So I'm going to try and utilize that for that particular stage. So you'll notice also I have a, an aftermarket bolt handle that's quite a bit larger than the original one. This is going to help obviously to manipulate the bolt a little bit quicker. When you're under stress, it's easier to find and just a bigger target to hit with your, your, uh, with your hand. Okay, so I decided that I'm going to be using the Anarchy Outdoors 3 round mag extension as my primary magazine for the match. I did a separate video on this product specifically, so if you want to learn more about it, you can watch that. But I figured since all the stages put up by the organization are 10 rounds, I'm starting the stage off with 13 rounds is probably beneficial in the event where I have to drop around because you know something malfunctions or I just have to get rid of a bad round. Um, I'll have three extra ones, which will eliminate the chances of me having to reload, which will probably save a lot of time. So this is gonna be one I'm running. So going on to the optic setup, um, a very important part was this Area 419 30 MOA base. Um, specifically because it gives me 30 MOA adjustment built into the base already. It saves a lot of elevation adjustment for my turrets and allows me to reach much further um, than otherwise would be possible, especially with the 22. When you're shooting 200 and 250 yards, you definitely want to get a base with some at least 20 MOA built into it. A more aggressive 30 MOA base here still allows you to zero at 50, but also have enough elevation to dial out to uh, much longer distances. So that's a really good addition here, the Area 419 scope base. Okay, so I spoke of the optic in my previous video a little bit, but I kind of want to reiterate why this optic here has been so popular for a lot of shooters in both Centerfire and NRL 22 competitions. Uh, this here is the Vortex Diamondback Tactical First Focal Plane. This particular one is the 6 to 24 times magnification, and it has a 50 millimeter objective lens. Um, for NRL 22, I would say besides having good um, turrets that track well, you really want an adjustable parallax that you can trust and that can come down to 10 yards. Um, and this scope allows you to do that. So even though it's a center fire scope, a lot of people will shoot it for NRL 22 because of the fact that the parallax adjustment is able to do that. Um, there's a, a marking here for 10 yards on the lower end of the parallax adjustment, but it actually goes beyond that if you need uh, to play around that and it goes all the way up to 300 and infinity of course which is really beneficial for NRL 22 because if you just have a fixed parallax adjustment at 50 or sometimes 70 yards for 22 specific scopes you're not only going to have a blurry sight picture at, at different distances but you're also going to have parallax error of course so having this scope that allows you to dial in your parallax at whatever distance you're shooting at is really beneficial because it's going to eliminate that parallax error and also give you a nice crisp image so a lot of these um, stages will have uh, varying targets from 10 yards close all the way out to 200 yards. So if you're shooting a 10 yard target and then you're transitioning to like a 200 yard target, it's really important to change your parallax so that your, your crosshair is tracking properly. Besides that, I really do trust these turrets. I've dialed in most of my shots when shooting this gun so far and it's tracked totally fine. I performed a box test when I initially got it. And then recently I performed a line test, which is basically just the vertical uh, testing the elevation portion of the scope just because I was a little bit crunched for time and it was still tracking perfectly fine. So I do trust these turrets. I think they're nice and solid. They don't have a zero stop unfortunately, but you just kind of have to keep um, track of how many rotations you're doing in your head and um, always dial back to zero after you're done shooting a stage. So the reticle in this uh, scope, as I mentioned, is a first focal plane, which is awesome because it's gonna be consistent and accurate with uh, any magnification that you choose to run. The reticle, I believe Vortex calls it the EBR2C, and it's kind of this Christmas tree style target reticle, which I think works really nicely. It's a very fine reticle, so probably not great for hunting, uh, but I think for competition, it suits it very nicely. This particular, uh, Diamondback Tactical is in mills just because all my scopes are in mills so I try and keep it consistent throughout all my optics but it is available in MOA if that's your your cup of tea. Okay so going to the other side of the rifle you can see here that I have a dope card holder. Now this is actually something that I made myself. I was considering buying a, a dope card holder but I've never used one and in competition I actually don't know if I will use one so I'm still debating whether or not I'll actually run this on Sunday because looking at these stages of fire most stages of fire only have two 
uh, sometimes three different distances, and I think it's enough where I can memorize. Um, but I just thought I'd show this because I, I did make it for the gun. It's quite a simple design. On the ACC chassis, on both sides, there are these two pre-drilled and tapped holes right above the magwell. And of course, what these are for uh, is to hold center fire rounds if you're shooting a center fire. And if on a stage of fire, you just need one or two rounds to finish it off, you can just grab it out and, and directly chamber it into the rifle. Um, since this is a 22, of course, I don't need uh, those two holes or anything else. So I found out that the threading of these holes is uh, 1024. And I just happen to have two uh, 1024 screws in my little uh, assortment of screws. So I cut them down to size and I used just a GoPro mount here. And I just screwed these right into the chassis in the pre-drilled and tapped holes. And uh, you could do this with a variety of different GoPro mounts. I made several iterations of this, but I decided to use a mount that I could use both holes in because when it's just one, it was a little bit too floppy and I didn't want anything damaging the uh, threads inside if I were to bump it up against something. So this is a lot more secure. Uh, you can see here that it just uses a standard GoPro hinge and then I have a GoPro um, GoPro compatible arm which I just epoxied this clear card holder to and this kind of gives me a nice little swivel action. I think it puts it in a pretty nice spot actually because when I'm behind the gun um, I can still see over the card holder so it's not obstructing my vision and it's far enough from the parallax adjustment where I can kind of reach around and I'm not bumping up onto the card too much. The hinge is nice to have because I'm coming up on a barricade and accidentally smack it. It's just going to kind of fold uh, rather than break anything. But again, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to run this on Sunday, but I thought I'd just show it because it is something that uh, I made for the gun and I think it would work if I do want to run a uh, dope card holder. Okay, so you'll notice that I'm running a sling on the rifle at the moment. This is just for demonstration purposes. If I am shooting a stage with a sling, I won't have the bipod on the gun probably, and vice versa as well. So the rear of the sling here is attached into the integrated QD cups that are built into the um, buttstock. You have on the uh, skeletonized buttstock here, two different options from MDT. One right there on the bottom, as well as one here towards the uh, back of the buttstock. I'm gonna run the one on the bottom here. It just seems to be a little more natural for me. And up at the front, I have an M-Lock uh, Magpul uh, sling mount. This is the one they designed to use with their paraclips, which you can see I have here on the sling. And I just utilize that onto the front of the forehand. What's kind of nice about this paraclip, or pardon me, this, this uh, sling mount is it also acts as a stop to prevent my bipod from coming all the way off the gun if I accidentally just kind of keep this loose, uh, it's not gonna just fall off my chassis. So this, there's actually an integrated stop screw here on the ACC chassis, but I'm never gonna be running my bipod any further than this uh, sling mount anyway. So I thought that was just a nice little stop for the bipod. The sling I'm running here is a very uh, budget-friendly uh, Magpul sling. This is their RLS sling. I think it stands for Rip Rifleman's uh, loop sling, but it's a very simple sling that's kind of like a 1907 style uh, support sling at the same time and it has a nice big arm loop here that you can put your arm through and help support the gun when you're shooting unsupported stages. That's kind of the reason why I purchased this um, sling, I think it was like 20 bucks and uh, looking at the stages of fire for this Sunday's match, there are two stages where you're allowed to use a sling but no support so I figured it was kind of worth the investment if this was going to be a regular thing and practicing with it I'll say I'm very shaky with using a sling and probably not very uh, stable um, but it's for sure better than shooting just offhand so I'm going to try and use this at the match and see how it goes again that's the Magpul RLS. Okay so that's basically the entire rifle setup in terms of um, things that I've done to it to shoot this match on Sunday. Again we have the uh, Atlas bipod on the Arca mount for the quick adjustment. I got my uh, sling, my support sling ready to go and with a quick detach system so if I'm not running it for the particular stage I can just take it off. Uh, good scope that's very popular amongst uh, NRL 22 shooters. My dope card holder which I'm not sure if I'm going to use yet and my magazine extension from Anarchy Outdoors. 
I think this is going to be a pretty good setup. Um, I mean, you can only buy so much accuracy. You hear people say that all the time. This is definitely a very nice setup. But if I don't do my part and if I don't have good data, I might as well shoot in the wrong direction um, because you're not going to hit anything, especially with 22. So hope you enjoyed part one of this series, and I'll see you guys in the next video.